Hi, my name is Rituparna Ghosh and I welcome you to a very special session which I call Doodle a Tale. You see, storytelling is most powerful when the listener and the teller come together. Yes, isn't it wonderful when we create a story together? So Doodle a Tale is my newest baby, my newest experiment in the field of storytelling, where I not just tell a story, but I also doodle along with it and invite you, my listener, to pick up your paper and pen and doodle whatever comes to your head. Now, we all know when we listen to stories, our brains throw up images. The images are all coming from the stories that the storyteller is telling. Now, when we doodle together, you have the freedom to interpret the story, to imagine the visuals and draw from them. Now, as we doodle this tale together, I will also be doodling along. So you will see a little window where I am drawing the images from the story. But you are free to not look at those images. You are free to just look away from the screen, look into your drawing book, listen to the story very carefully and draw whatever comes to your head. Now, this is a very special experiment, so I hope you are going to enjoy this story and you're going to draw your pictures. And when you draw your pictures, if you've drawn them different from what I draw, remember, you can find me and share them with me. I'd love to see. Now, what's my story? Where is it from? I'm going to tell that to you in a wink of an eye. Oh, but we don't have a storybook ready yet. So, um, for this storybook, we're going to use an A3 sheet. I folded the A3 sheet into two equal halves and I cut two single strips out of it. And uh, I will fold the paper to make a simple accordion, like a zigzag kind of a book. In this story, I'm going to need only one of these accordion storybooks, but uh, this is a simple demo for you to make two. You can always use your second accordion book to doodle another story for yourself. Now, I like to create simple margins, black margins, on each page of my doodled storybook so that I can create neat drawings in the center. This helps me keep a, a well-balanced image on each side and it looks very neat and clean and it's a book which I can use to retell these stories. So before we start doodling the story, um, I would recommend you cut out these strips, fold your paper into an accordion storybook and make these simple black margins. Now you are ready to begin your doodle storybook. The story that we are going to doodle today comes all the way from Iceland. Now Iceland is a very curious country. It has many interesting stories. Stories about Vikings, stories about Thor, Odin, Norse mythology and stories about giants and trolls. It's also a very beautiful country. A country where you would find waterfalls, lush green uh, hills, snow, craters, volcanoes, geysers, hot springs and even whales. Well, the beauty of Iceland is that wherever you go, there is so much, so much nature or such natural beauty that you are going to be mesmerized by what you see. Well, now I want you to imagine beautiful Icelandic countryside. And amongst this countryside, amongst the lush green slopes of the hills with the sun shining bright on, on the top, you should also know that in Iceland, the sun never sets. In fact, it's always bright and shiny in summer. And people have very thick curtains in their homes, which they cover to keep the sun out of their homes. So in the countryside, in between these beautiful hillocks with the sun shining on top, there was a beautiful house, a house that belonged to a farmer couple. Farmer couple, then the names were Helge, and Matilda. Now you should also know about Iceland, Icelandic names, is that they always mean something. Helge meant one, meant one who is blessed and Matilda means strong and mighty. Now while looking at these uh, this farmer couple you may imagine them to be any which way but their names are significant because that defined the way they were and the way they led their lives. Now, Helgi and Matilda were loved by everyone. They lived away from the town, but they had friends there. They didn't have any children, but their pride was this, this, this uh, black and white uh, cattle that they had in their farm. And the, the produce, the milk produce that they had. 
every day Helgi would work with milk his cows and he would go to the market to sell them and he made good enough money money which gave them a nice comfortable home now one day Helgi decided to go to the market to meet some of his friends and spend a day now he was going to a market which was very far from his house so he called to his wife Matilda and said honey I'm going to go to the market and I'm going to be back only late in the night do you think you can manage things all by yourself Matilda turned to Helgi and said well I am a big girl I know how to look after the house don't you worry off you go and I will be fine Helgi went his way and Matilda liked the way she said she managed things very well she chopped she cleaned she looked after the house and by evening by the time it was getting a little nippy she sat down to she sat down next to the fire fireplace to sew something for her husband but there she was with all her little kit of sewing kit she sat there humming to herself when there came a knock at the door matilda looked up from her sewing and she saw a strange man with straw hair and a long pointy beard he was looking at her with threatening eyes he had his hand on his jacket and something told matilda that inside his jacket there was a knife matilda remember what her name meant she was calm she was cool she kept sewing and she looked up at the stranger and she said yes may i help you stranger said hmm are you alone in the house she said why do you want to know is your husband home well he's out there in the barn and he's going to be back any moment all right i'm going to wait for him right here matilda saw the stranger she knew she was in danger her husband was in home and she couldn't fool him for much longer she asked him well what do you want from my husband i have heard that he's a great man people say helge is really blessed i've come to meet him ah all right well anyone can be great i'm sure you are too yes i am the greatest said the stranger matilda took a deep breath and she sighed hmm i wonder how great you are the stranger said all right watch me he stepped out of the door outside on the greens and he grew taller and taller and taller and taller and taller matilda bent low outside her door to see how tall the stranger had grown hmm she said all right i think growing big is not a big deal you see everyone grows uh plants do trees do humans do too you just seem to grow a little bit more but then that's okay that's not a big deal i think growing smaller is tougher the stranger who had grown to great heights perhaps 15 or 16 feet high he looked down at matilda and boomed all right you want me to grow smaller i will and so the stranger who was very 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 tall smaller and smaller and smaller he was still growing small when matilda thought very quickly hmm what should i tell him what should i tell him the stranger grew shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter till he was the height of a 5 year old child matilda looked down and said all right is that as, as small as you can go the stranger didn't like the sound of it and he said all right watch me 
he went smaller and smaller and smaller till he was the size of a squirrel. Matilda laid her hand on the ground. The stranger, who was the size of a squirrel, climbed on to her palm and said, Is this small enough? Hmm. Yes, it's small, but I suppose this is as small as you can be. I'm wondering, uh, do you think you can go smaller like my thimble? Now a thimble is a little metallic device that you wear on your thumb when you are sewing so that you don't hurt your finger. In Hindi, it's called a nook. And in German, it's called a finger hut. Isn't it interesting? So thimble was what she had and we have a thimble right here. So she showed her thimble and said, I don't suppose you can grow as small as my thimble. The stranger felt challenged. He said, you watch me, woman. And he grew smaller and smaller and smaller. He shrunk so small that he was really tiny. That's when Matilda picked up her thimble and she covered him with it. And she picked it up gently, locking the two ends of the thimble with her fingers. And she said, Oh, look who's inside my thimble. The giant, the stranger, who was perhaps a giant a moment again, a moment ahead, he, he shouted from inside, Let me out, you woman! You let me out! The moment I step out, you're going to watch me grow up to 20 feet height. You wait and watch. Matilda shook it gently, shook the thimble gently and said, Uh-huh, I'm not going to release you from here. We are going to wait till my husband gets back. Now, it was few more hours till Helgi returned home. And when he returned, he came in through the door and said, Matilda, look, I've got beautiful yellow ribbons for you. Matilda looked up at her husband and said, Well, I have something for you too. What do you see here? Well, he looked at her fingers and said, Ah, uh, a thimble? Well, that's not just a thimble. Come close. Helgi walked closer to his wife and she took her hand close to his ears and she tapped it. The stranger inside, really tiny and small, shouted out again, Let me get out of this place! I am suffocated inside! I am going to finish all of you up! I am going to eat you all up! You wait! You don't know what you've done! Uh-uh-uh! Matilda said, well, you wait inside till I tell Helgi all about you. Matilda turned towards Helgi and told him everything, the entire story of how the stranger came in through the door, asked for him and how he grew so tall. She was scared and she had to think quickly. So she asked him to grow smaller and smaller and smaller till he could fit inside her thimble. Now her husband, Helgi, shocked. He didn't know what to do. He asked Matilda, Matilda, what are we supposed to do about this stranger? He seems to be a giant. Ah, uh, he's out to destroy us. We have to be very, very careful. Matilda said, well, can you think of something? Helgi took the thimble very carefully from Matilda's hands. She must have been tired held it and shook it gently and asked, Um, Mr. Hello, Mr. Stranger. Uh, how are you feeling inside? Now the stranger, he said, I am not feeling good. Uh, Mr. Stranger, do you have a name? Uh, yes, I am called Egil. Now in Iceland, the name Egil means one who terrorizes. Now Helgi knew that Egil really meant his name and he would really terrorize them the moment he stepped out of that little thimble. Uh, uh, Mr. Egil, um, 
uh, tell me something. If I let you go, do you promise to not bother us again? And do you promise to not terrorize us again? Egil, who was inside, said, Oh, no, I'm not going to make any such promises. The moment I step out of this thimble, I'm going to grow so big and large that you will ah, be destroyed. Oh, he'll give me that. Uh, uh, I can't do that. Well, then I don't think I have much option. Helgi moved his hand and swayed his hand and swayed and swayed and swayed. Now you have to imagine Egil really tiny inside this thimble. He goes stopsy and turvy up and down. He rolls and bounces against the walls of the thimble till he is seasick and he's about to throw up and he goes, oh, stop, stop, stop. Don't do this anymore. Don't do this anymore. I can't stay inside. I promise. I promise. I promise. I won't grow tall again. All right. And you will not terrorize us again. I will not terrorize you again. And you will never ever come back to our farm. I will never ever return to your farm. All right. Helgi looked at Matilda and said, Do you think we should let him go? Remember, I told you, Helgi and Matilda were kind and gentle. They were never the kinds who would really terrorize the one who was meant to terrorize. So they said, All right, Mr. Hegel, we are going to let you go and you will keep your promise like a true gentleman. They walked out into the meadow and they let Mr. Hegel step out of the thimble. That was the end of Mr. Egil, or so. That's what Helgi and Matilda thought. They went back to their home, they had their dinner, and they went to bed. Next day in the morning, when, when Helgi stepped out of the house to look for his cows, he could find them nowhere. That's when Matilda thought, I think there's something wrong. She went deeper into the meadow under a blueberry tree, and there she saw, her cattle, really, really tiny. They had shrunk to not more than three inches. And the little tiny calf was really the size of her fingernail. Ah, what do we do with this? said Helgi. Oh no, this must be the work of Mr. Egil. He must have done this. He must have charmed my cattle. Well, hmm, they didn't ask him to not trouble his cattle, did they not? So now, Helgi and Matilda kept thinking and thinking and thinking, what do we do? How do we make a living? Our cattle has now shrunk and who is going to drink milk from such tiny cows? That's when Matilda said, all right, this is a blessing in disguise. Why don't you pack your cattle up, take them to the fair? And that's what Helge did. He opened his towel, wrapped his little three-inch cattle and took them to the fair. He set them up on a table and people came from near and far to look at the three-inch cattle. Real cows that mooed, that chewed cud, and that slept and snored. Now what happened to Egil, no one knows because that's the end of the story. Now I hope you have drawn your images because if you have, you would have your accordion storybook all ready for yourself. Now if your pictures are anywhere like mine, then I would still love to see them. But if you've drawn them any different from the others, that you see then remember to find me and share your pictures with me thank you for listening and thank you for doodling